more often than not, people come and say, Hey, I need a salesperson. And, you know, I could give you a salesperson in a week, but they're going to create problems for you for you for a year because you don't have a system, a process, a strategy, a structure, any automation, a great offer. Your whole sales system as the founder or the CEO is usually in your head and that's not replicatable or sustainable. Welcome to the business ownership podcast brought to you by awareness strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, Jim. Jim, thank you so much for being here with us today. Always excited to uh, talk and have provide some value, have some great conversation. Excellent. So give everybody the highlight of who you are and what you do for work, our business. <laughs> uh, well, my name is Jim Padilla, and uh, I am a sales and acceleration specialist. Uh, my wife and I have a company, Gain the Edge, that specializes in growing and scaling companies um, with qualified booked appointments that lead to daily sales. That's the focus. And that entails sales strategies, sales systems, processes, and sales teams that replicate you and remove you from the sales process so that we can you can scale while you're serving your clients instead of chasing leads and sales. Love it. So let's back up the bus a bit. How did you get into sales as a thing? Well, I actually, sales is something that has been just a natural default in my life. Uh, and it's I've been selling my whole life. Technically, all of us have been selling our whole life. You've been selling every day of your life, your whole life. That's how people marry you. That's how people go out to dinner with you. That's how people buy stuff from you. That's how your kids eat broccoli before your homework, all of that stuff. So um, because you have the ability to move people to make great decisions in their own best interest, that's how we're wired as humans, just somehow in the sale, in, in the sales part of the business, we forget that. And we think sales has to be some sort of crazy robotic task that takes us off of being who we're supposed to be. But for me specifically, uh, you know, I was born uh, to some teenage parents and they had very little skill set of raising children. And so uh, I took the brunt of that in many ways, including, you know, a lot of physical abuse. And, uh, and I was, you know, in, in foster care um, by 13 on the streets and gangs at 16 and in jail by 19. And um, I spent the first 20 years of my life spending every waking minute trying to read the room so I could learn how to bend influence in my direction. You know, I had to go home and try to win my mom over so that I thought I had to convince her not to beat me. I had to be at school trying to convince people that my home life was perfect. Uh, and, you know, on the streets and in gangs and everything else, I win people over to my direction so that they would see me as an asset and an ally instead of as a threat. And, you know, little did I know that 20 years later, I'd be making millions of dollars teaching other people how to read the room and bend influence in their direction so that you can be perceived as an ally and not as a threat so that people will let down their defenses and give you a credit card and listen to you and want what you have. Nice. I love it. So we are going to delve into this. And kind of at first blush, I'd like to go into, I think a lot of salespeople set themselves up for failure by putting people off <laughs> before they've even walked into the room. <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about that, because obviously that is a skill that you've overcome with uh, immensity. I'll just put it that way. So um, one, why do people do that in your opinion? And two, how do they overcome it? You know, I mean, there's a number of reasons. Uh, it, you know, most of it just comes down to fear and people not trusting themselves to actually show up as the full measure of who they're supposed to be. And, you know, I don't want to get ethereal and woo-woo on this stuff. It's just when you're at the best level of who you are, you're, you know, you're standing tall, you feel good, you're, your head's above the riffraff. And most of the time when there's problems and challenges, we tend to be immersed in the problem and challenges, which then take us out of being at our best level. And when you're at, when you're not at your best level, you don't make the best decisions. So the first part is understanding that you have something to contribute in the room. I have this delusional sense of self that I, I feel like when I show up, the party starts, you know, and that people want, <laughs> that's you know, true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so when I show up and people stop talking, I don't get all self-conscious. I just assume they were talking about me and, and planning a party for me or something. And now we're just going to carry it on. Um, but I actually believe that any room that I'm in is better for it. And you need to believe that too. And when you do, you show up differently because now you're not, there's no, there's no concerns. You're not worried about taking darts or somebody's going to deflate your ego or anything. You just know that I'm here to deliver value. And so it doesn't matter at all what anybody thinks, because I know that I am here to contribute. Nice. So 
you, you brought up a great image for me. And I think I'll ask you because I think if anybody would know the answer to this, it'd be you. Is if somebody, you know, happens to take the wrong phone call before they walk into a room or, you know, they just get emotionally sideswiped, uh, how do they refocus, recenter before they either walk into that room, step on that stage, do the thing that they got to do? Well, life is life and there's always many quadrants and, and cubes and, and supposedly women are better at this. You know, men are spaghetti or what is it? Women are, men are, women are spaghetti, men are waffles. Like we operate in one square at a time and women can operate with everything tangled. Um, I have not heard that one before, but I love but it. all of us are that way. We all have a million things going on and you have to be able to be in the moment. The problem that you are dealing with is going to still be there when you walk out of the room. So feel free to leave it there. It's, it's not, unless it is literally life and death like a kidney is about to explode or something's going to happen or you have to be on an organ donor somewhere. Um, no problem is so big that it can't be contextualized and put aside for the moment. Um, I actually have, a, we have something that we talk about if we do training, we call them thought units and thought units. We all have them. Um, and some people have more capacity than others, but let's just say you have a hundred thought units, a hundred percent, right? That, if you're at a hundred percent, that means you're totally present and right here, like right this minute, I'm not thinking about anything else. I have a hundred percent of my thought units are right here with you. I'm not thinking about tax bills, my, my kid, my daughter who made me mad or my grandson or any, nothing. I'm just thinking I'm here. I'm with you. The moment I show up on this call and I'm thinking about something else. Now I'm only 90% here or 80% here or 50% here. And now I'm not even capable of delivering value to you because I'm not in this moment. Right. So we have to make sure that we are always focusing on 100 percent thought units. And it doesn't mean you don't get off track. It means you have to be so conscious of it that you're consistently pulling yourself back on track. Nice. Love it. So let's get into kind of the basis with which you work with people in particular. So are you working with sales teams to help them do their thing? Are you bringing sales teams into a company and helping them get conversions? How do you operate? Well, at our at our core, at, at the the high end on the back side of the company, um, people bring us in to be their sales team. So we plug and play as a full sales division, from senior VP of sales all the way down to salespeople on the ground, team leaders, managers, the whole thing. Um, Challenge is most people are not at the volume the, to support that, and more often than not, people come and say, "Hey, I need a salesperson." And you know, I could give you a salesperson in a week, but they're going to create problems for you for, you for a year because you don't have a system, a process, a strategy, a structure, any automation, a great offer. Your whole sales system, as the founder or the CEO, is usually in your head, and that's not replicatable or sustainable. So now we come in and we put systems in place that are going to build you a sales playbook, get you a system and a process that's replicatable so somebody else can actually do it. Then we come in with automation to get your sales, your qualification processes, applications, post offer, follow up, all of that stuff. And then we can start matching salespeople for you. If you're a smaller company, you know, in that half a million range or under, then, you know, we can put a salesperson in place. If you're a bigger company with, with scale opportunities, then we plug a whole sales team in. But that's the journey that you're on. <clears throat> and it's always in service to one thing. Our, our huge, our metric of significance is QBA, qualified booked appointments. If I can't get anything at this entire conversation imparted into you, it is this. As QBAs go, so does your business go. QBAs will save your day. It's all about qualified booked appointments and you need to have them. And usually they're not leads. Leads and prospects are not QBA. 